Hey, 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 what is up everyone? It is me, Pretty Poor Gamer, and E3 is pretty much done and dusted for another year. We've had lots and lots of games to see at E3, and like you, I have been on tender hooks to see what people announce, and we've had a plethora of good games. Now, I want to show my top five games at the E3 press conference, and you're actually going to see it's going to be a little bit biased to... Sony because they fucking wowed the shit out of me. A uh, fucking hell, the amount of games they had. As ever, when I'm standing up, this is ad lib, this is not scripted, this is just me nattering on, so if I do stumble with my words, please don't shout at me too much in the comments. So, the very first game I want to say really excited me was the new Spider Man game. This was heavily hinted at that Insomniac were making a new Spider-Man game and it was going to be exclusive for PlayStation 4 but we actually got to see gameplay of it and I say gameplay it's more of like a cutscene slash gameplay uh, interlogue but with, there's a bit where there he's in the building and he's just jumping on the wall and then he's jumping through and it just looked absolutely incredible and the last Spider-Man game I played was the Spider-Man 1 on the PlayStation where you could swing into nothingness and climb to the highest building and that just feels like it's going to recapture some of the, the fun that I had as a kid when I was playing Spider-Man. Number two is Sea of Thieves from the Microsoft E3 press conference. Now when I first saw it I was like mm, it's nice but wow Rare have outdone themselves. I thoroughly enjoyed that. Those are the kind of games I like playing. I'm not a huge heavy uh, competitive FPS multiplayer kind of guy, so the multiplayers I like to play are more casual and relaxed, like Rocket League, you know, there's some element of competition, but in the end it's just all fun and games, and Sea of Thieves looks like it's going to capture that spirit a lot. I can all wait to go in the high seas with my friends, group of four, break down ships, find treasure, it's going to be absolutely incredible. It was just, it was amazing, ah, I loved it, well done Rare, Rare seems to be back and back with a kick. Okay, number three on my list is... Actually, I'm changing it. My number three on my list is going to be God of War 4 or God of War Thor or however you want to call it and say it. It was the intro to Sony's E3 press conference and wow, it made an impact. It was amazing, the level of detail. Oh, by the way, Sony said that all their games were running on the standard PlayStation 4, so if you're thinking, oh, when the Neo comes out, I'm going to be left behind... No, you're fucking not. I mean, you've got uh, Uncharted 4 and now God of War Thor and all that. Just absolutely mind-blowing. It was amazing and that gameplay looked good. And this Kratos seems a bit more humble, a bit more relaxed and a bit less, ah, kill, kill, kill. I mean, your son shot him with an arrow. If that happened to me and I was Kratos, I would have flashed the fuck in. But he was like, ah, go finish your hunt, son. So yeah, it was, it was pretty, pretty incredible. Okay, moving swiftly on to the number two spot. Now, the number two spot was a bit... Oh, should I, should I include it? Should I not include it? I was not 100% sure, uh, but I'm putting Final Fantasy XV in there. We have seen a lot of it. The game is now coming out. It wasn't a new game that's been announced. It's been in development for 10 years, but while they showed a lot, the, the Ephragala flying ship, which is like Ragnarok from Final Fantasy VII, blew my mind. The Titan fight looked quite tricky. The guy looked like he was sweating balls on that stage trying to fight. Uh, there's going to be a wait mode for people who appreciated the old turn-based style of Final Fantasy 1 through to 3 and Final Fantasy 10 which was turn-based and not active time so that's great for those people as well and there just seems to be so much stuff to do in the world and it looks so deep and I've had my Dulux edition pre-ordered the second I could and I really really can't wait for September to roll around. Okay, and now the final game on the list is, I say a surprising one for some, but if anyone who's watching this who knows me, they know I love these kind of games, and it's Detroit. Detroit had an amazing showing at E3. So basically, it's a classic uh, David Cage game where... David Cage? Is it? Oh, I forget now. I don't think it is. Or it might be. I'll have to double check with that, and you might see an annotation. But yeah, Quinatic Dreams make stellar games, they made Heavy Rain, they made Beyond Two Souls, uh, Fahrenheit something I think it was called, and it's all choice games, everything's based on choice, and this looks like going to be the pinnacle of their games. You see an android called Connor, and he's having to talk down this other android who's got a girl, and the, the intro trip, you see the girl just fly off, and you're like, fuck me, no way, and you're like, yes, yes way, that is going to happen. 
and then it kind of rewinds and you see all the other things how it could have played out differently and it just seems like my kind of game I am very very excited to get my hands on Detroit I do want one more honorable mention uh, just in case anyone shouts at me thinking I didn't care about this game Death Stranded, holy fuck, Norman Reedus is back, Kojima is back, and the PlayStation exclusive. It just looks absolutely powerful and invoking, but the reason why I didn't make my list is we didn't actually see a lot. Now, I know you can say, well, we didn't see a lot of Spider-Man either, but it just feels like that's more of a rounded game. This seemed like more concept than anything else. At least with Spider-Man, we know what we're going to do, but Death Stranded looked amazing. Norman Reedus looked absolutely amazing. Kojima looked like such a smug bastard. It was great. It was a really well done uh, intro to a new game that they're going to make. But anyway, that's my top five E3 games of 2016. I will hope to see you next year for the same list and hopefully many, many more new games. Maybe Final Fantasy VII might be on the list. Who knows? But anyway, guys, I will catch you later. I've been Pretty Poor Gamer. Please like and subscribe.